Hey everybody, I'm Lee with Old Sneak Line, and today we've got a very special treat. This is a warm blood. He is a hunter show horse, and he has got a lameness. Why don't you look at it? This one right here, he's trying to tell us. So he's been lame on this foot. We got all cleaned up, but we have not trimmed it. There's a quarter crack right here. You can tell it bothers him. So right here, it goes all the way down to the bottom. And then if you look at the lateral side over here, we've got to start over here as well. But this is the main problem right here. You can see how the foot kind of rolls down. So there's been a lot of pressure pushing up on this, causing it to blow out at the top. So step one, we're going to trim it. So this horse is just freshly shod, so there's not a lot we're going to be able to do. But if you look down this foot, you can see that it's pretty high on this side. Which is going to cause extra pressure right here. So step one is just a good balanced trim. You can tell by looking at this that there's no sole depth, so last thing we want to do is trim that, so don't have a lot of foot to work with. Balance is important in any shoeing, but in this case, it is imperative that we get it level and balanced where he's comfortable. So now, if you look around over here, you can see that quarter crack runs right there. So what I want to do is I want to float it to where it's not touching. So I'm going to get on this side of it, then I'm going to get on this side of it. So ultimately, I need this part right here not to touch because I don't want any more pressure shoving that quarter crack down that way. So there's not a lot of foot here, so I'll take some out of this and I'll take a lot out of my shoe trying to make sure that I don't over trim it. So you can see my rasp is only getting that spot. lot lower right here. We'll call that good today. So now when you come around over here, you can see just a slight gap right there. That's not enough. We're going to need more, so we're going to have to take it out of our shoe. Yeah. So the shoe we're going to use is a Mustad Equilibrium Heart Bar. I think a heart bar is very imperative on a horse like this because 
it ultimately acts like a prosthetic, right? So he's hurting in this region where the quarter crack is. What we can do is we can trim it lower there and we'll take out that section of our shoe. But this is gonna have a lot of strength and rigidity across the back of the foot. So he's not gonna have any, any pain, uh, mainly because it's not gonna be touching it at all. So whatever's hurting him is gonna be out of action. So when you're forging aluminum, whenever you're shaping them, you almost need to use heat. So a propane forge is pretty nice, but they're very tricky because aluminum heats up and very quickly. So about 30 seconds or so is about as long as you're gonna to wanna to put it in there. How I know when it's ready is by it how it sounds. Uh, that's not really ready. I will mark it since I got it out though, so I know what side is what. Moving it is very important too. gets hot. So another thing, when you move it around, you can kind of feel it drag a little bit. And when you hit it, it's not very loud now. So as I'm looking at this shape, this is a very great shaped shoe. A lot of times you don't have to do much, but this horse has a tighter toe and straight walls. So I'm gonna come in here and straighten it up on the sides. Tighten the toe up a little bit. With the horse being trimmed pretty short, I'm just going to knock a little sole pressure out. That was just to open up the heels just a little bit. Go check our fit. So I'd say that fits pretty well. So you can see it's pushing down on the frog quite a bit right there. We either need to use dental impression material right there or move our frog plate like we did on this one, as you can see on this foot. We did the same thing, and you can see this frog is pushed down, the frog plate is, and then we used dental impression material on it. We drilled holes to help hold it in place. But I've put on thousands of heart bars incorrectly, and now I can appreciate putting them on there. Correctly is a way better deal. You're pretty much wasting your time if you put one on wrong. They're not getting the effect that you desired. And frog pressure is the number one thing. But I need frog pressure on this one because I need a float right there. So go grind it up. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it on my shoe so I know exactly where this float is. It just eliminates some of the guesswork.
So now I've got those two marks that I know exactly where, and then this is the fit that I need to tighten up a little bit. All right, so now for this. You can see that I'm getting it lower. So we ground it down just about to half. We still need it to be strong. And then I just taper the edges because I don't like it to be very abrupt edges. This just helps hold my dental impression material in there better. So that's, that's going to just allow the dental impression material to come in. And as you can tell, we used our countersink bit for drilling and tapping. It just allows it to squirt in there and hold a little better. There we go. Ah, no problem. What? No. No, I can mix up some dental impression material.
need to knock my frog out. Okay. Just wait and I'll, or not gonna use it. No, Jeb, just come look at this real quick. Just gonna go knock it out. This will just take a second. So I'm going to knock my frog plate down to where I've got even pressure. If you grab the smallest shoe possible, this is a double lot challenger. So there's two ways to do it. So I've got to move the frog plate up so I don't get too much frog pressure. So I can Option A, do it just like that, and then move it over right on the edge. And I'm using the heel of my hammer just because I want to hit a line right there. The other option would be to come here. So now you can see how this is sticking up that way. This is the tricky part, to level it. You gotta make sure you don't knock out what you just tried to put in there. So you can see how I'm holding it off the anvil. So now you can see how much that's sticking up. You just want solid frog contact. Now you can see that it's touching the heels. Go ahead and I'll, a little bit more dental impression material than that. All right, so we got some Mustad Comfort Mix. This is the cushion. Works really well, I like it better than a pour-in because the worst part you can do, have happen with a heart bar is get something underneath of it. So this just protects the sensitive area that we're loading, which would be the frog.
Oop. One of the most important things when you're using comfort mix of cushion or any dental impression material is to get it down. As soon as you get it tacked on, make sure you got the material where you want it. And get it down to where they can step on it. As you can see how it's smushing out right here. So we just don't want any high spots. So sometimes you can pull them over a little bit, make them stand on it. That's perfect. Checking level, looks good. Looking at her float, float looks good. One of the last things you'd want to do is nail into this crack because they're trying to make it stronger, not weaker. Old nail holes on a freshly shod horse always seem to be an issue as well. You don't have to block your nails, but when you're running into old nail holes like this, it's pretty nice. Yeah, you can stop. All right, so let's sh show you the shoe that we ended up doing. Everything worked out great. Hoof cushion set up fantastic, right where we want it to be. And we did not go completely to the end of the frock. So everything's looking good, got a nice fit. And then if you look on the side, we have a nice floated region right here. Now we're going to just go after this crack a little bit right now because you see the sharp edges right there. As that pushes together, that's going to cause some pain. can see the blood in it. That's from the crack. Perfect. It's going to heal up good. I can float this a little bit more if I want to.
Very nice. So we got the got it all cleaned up. One thing I did is I put some wonder dust on it to make sure that it's not going to get infected that we cleaned it out. And uh, we ran the buffer over it. Most of the struggle with gluing shoes on is in the prep. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this piece of hose in there for a drain because we're going to seal this one shut. We don't do that all the time, but we're going to use this Hampton patch for gluing shoes on. Should work really well. Look down there. So when you're mixing this up, you see the color? So see how it's changed colors right there? That means it's getting mixed up. Right. We have Pretty well. So now we'll just wrap it up, make sure it stays where we want it to. Set it down, let it set up. Yeah. All right, tell that it's set up nice. Patch worked well. So we've tried a lot of we've tried a lot of different straws. No, take a time out. Hey, hey. So we've tried a lot of different straws, and the cheaper ones, like drink ones, are going to break off. Where this is a very firm one. The whole idea of a drain is so that you can put something in here and flush that out while this crack is still covered so it has some rigidity so it's not going to flex like it was. But now any concerns of infection, you just squirt a syringe in there and you can flush it right out. Pretty happy with that. Touching this up just a little bit here. 